Hi, this is Evelyn of The Modern Needle, and I am the designer behind um, the Easy Peasy Canadian Winter Socks. And as I developed that pattern, and it is a uh, thicker boot sock, I get all kinds of questions on Instagram and Facebook asking me questions about the socks and about sock knitting in particular. And I mentor a few sock knitters and there's some questions that always come up. So what I thought is I will make a video talking about what type of yarn, what makes a good sock, etc. Not the knitting just yet, just the preparation on thoughts that you should that that go into this before you start your sock. So let's dive right in. The first thing that I do want to talk about is the yarn. There are all kinds of yarns that you can get. My Canadian winter socks are made with um, Aran weight. And Aran weight is a bulkier or a thicker yarn. Um, they're great for hiking, boot liners, skate liners, um, just to wear in the winter time in boots. I have rain oats in my feet and in my hands. So the number one, um, the number one yarn is actually not warm enough for my feet. So I was looking for a thicker sock and there really wasn't anything that I liked. So I came up with my own pattern. The pattern has 15 sizes. You can either knit them toe to the cuff or cuff to the toe both including all 15 sizes is in one pattern it is available on Ravelry I believe it's ten dollars and I will add a code to the end of the video to give you 10% off if you buy it but there are hundreds if not thousands of patterns out there so I'm pretty sure that one of them will speak to you so normally the, the regular sock yarn looks like this. It is a thinner sock yarn. It's usually a number one and it comes like this or like this. The difference is this is a 50 gram ball. This is a 100 gram ball. You will need at least 100 grams for one pair of socks. If I buy two balls of these and an extra little one, I have enough to get three pairs of socks out of them because I don't make my cuff super long. Um, I usually make my cuff eight inches before I start the ribbing. So I get three pairs out of it. These little balls here, um, often this is the difference between European made yarns and US or Canadian made yarns. The it actually goes this way. In Europe, you buy the 50 gram balls most of the time. Um, I don't know why it's just the 100 gram balls are not that popular, except maybe for sock knitting. They do now have the 100 gram balls or the 150 or the bigger the size of the yarn, the bigger the ball needs to be that you can make one pair of socks out of them. So, and it gives you actually, I don't mind the little balls because if I just want to um, have different toes and different heels and different cuffs, I don't need to buy a whole big ball like this to get that out of there. So if I have one of these 50 gram balls, I can get two or three socks, pairs of socks out of this quite easily. Um, so it does save a little bit of money. It saves a little bit of space. Do what you think you want to do. So the sock yarns themselves, they usually have a 20 or 25% nylon in it. And the reason why they have that is so that, that the wear and tear on them is quite, um, it can deal with the wear and, and tear. Often I find this part of your foot where the heaviest bit of your body travels and the balls of your foot, this is where you need most often 
the nylon so that they do wear. Another part of the toes are often up here where the toenail might wear through where um, the extra nylon certainly helps. For myself, I like the hardier yarns because I, be I believe that they wear better than the um, super soft merino yarns and you can certainly buy these. Um, this, I believe, is a Regia yarn and that's the company that makes the socks. This company here. And this here is just a striped sock, as you can see. But for a while, they came out um, by socks where you can knit two, two of the socks exactly the same. And then they had like yellow yarn in the middle so that, you know, this is where you need to start. At the end of that, you need to start the second sock. And then they had a, a single color for the bottom of the foot and then stripy color for the top of the foot going up. And it almost guaranteed that you had two socks that looked exactly the same on the one ball. Now for knitters that knit two at a time on Magic Loop, um, you would knit from either end. However, if you have stripes on the socks, you have to be aware if the ball is wound like this and the stripes go this way, you will have one will have the stripe sequence going this way. The other will, will have a stripe sequence going the other way around. Even though now, as I say it, I don't think that that will work because you need to find the middle where, um, where the brown starts again. Anyways, that's a bit of a different topic. But this is the, the normal um, sock yarn that gets knitted with anywhere from a 1.75 millimeter needle to 3.0 or even 3.25 millimeter needle. And why is that? Well, as we all come in different sizes, we all knit a little bit different. Um, some people knit really tight and some people knit really uh, loose. The fabric that you're after is addresses the bottom of the foot where you do get your your main wear and you want to have a tight fabric you don't want to have tons of air looking uh through that you want to have a tight weave so that when you're the tighter the tighter the knit is on the bottom of the foot the harder wearing your sock will be for you. If it is a looser knit, the individual strands will wear as here it forms one tight cohesive fabric and they will wear more together. It's like two or three people holding hands like this instead of just one by itself. So they are harder wearing, plus they're safer. If the sock slides around your foot, you're more apt for falls or what whatever can happen with loose socks um the socks normally come wound up on skeins like this now you can't really once you unwind it it will look like this I know that this here is a stripey yarn because the stripes go all the way from the one side all the way through to the other. And I have a few yarn strands lying beside one another. So I know that that will be a nice stripe where a yarn like this that is not that does not have uniform lines going through it like this will not stripe. It'll blips of color and often they stack into what is called pooling. Um, if you don't know what that is, look, um, put into Google yarn pooling and you will see how how these guys here will stack on top of one another and it'll form like a zigzag or like a lightning. Some people really love it, some people don't like it. You'll have to look at it to see what it is, but very often that will happen. So you'll have to, if you don't like it, there are patterns that'll help break it up. Or you can use two colors in one to help you break that up. So, um, obviously you cannot knit of a hank like this. 
um, you will need a yarn swift, which will look like this. I bought mine on Amazon many years ago. This here will screw to your tabletop um, or the back of your chair or where, or counter, whatever. I usually open mine halfway, bring the yarn over halfway, and then I'll put it up all the way. I'll cut through the strands that hold it together, which are here. And I can tell that this is the beginning strand because it has the outside colors. So if I cut through all of this, it I will release this yarn here, which is just tying it together. And then I have my beginning and end. But very often it will have another another um, row of yarn ties somewhere that you need to release before you can bind it. And then you get a yarn winder like this. This is how I store it. I don't have the belt um, stretched when I'm not using it because I don't want it to wear out. These things here are quite expensive. I believe this was $85. And for whatever reason, they have this silliest tiny knob on here, which actually cramps my hand. So I took it to the um, hardware store and the gentleman there helped me put a bigger knob on. So you have the yarn on the swift and then this guy here will wind you a super beautiful ball even though like i said i don't use this here a whole lot i have a jumbo winder that is mounted to my counter it was only 50 dollars, i think on amazon but the yarn stores have it as well and i use that all the time it's up all the time because i work with yarn all the time so there's different price points for everything um for example this ball of the little ball of yarn is $7.25 plus tax. It's from the Little Red Mitten in St. Thomas, Ontario, who I knit for quite a bit. Or you can get the hundred. Um, this here is a hundred grams. And I believe this was maybe $18 or $19. I bought it on sale for $10. You can buy a thicker weight yarn. This is 150 grams. It is a six ply. These are often called four ply because when you look at the strands, they have four strands which make up the um, which make up the yarn. This makes six strands that make up the yarn. A um, 100 gram ball will make you a pair of socks, but if I have two of these. I can get three pairs of socks out of it. Same with this. Um, if I have two of them, and these obviously get knitted with a little bit of a bigger needle, I believe you would use 2.5, um, anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5, depending on how loose or tight of a knitter that you are. So, and if it has nylon in it, that sock will hopefully wear for a very long time. I tend to not use um, merino for socks a whole lot. I find that my feet are too rough and they wear through this really soft yarn very fast. I don't get tons of wear out of it, whether it has nylon or not. Now, one of the things that you can do if you have um, lots of this for socks and you find it's really not wearing as well as you want you can use a mohair thread or a silk thread or another lace weight thread to use with it and just maybe knit the foot portion of the sock and then the rest of the leg it doesn't get anywhere or tear at all it's just on your leg the worst that can happen is that it slouches down and there is ways to combat that. So this is the difference about the yarns. And of course, they do come in all different um, price points on the yarn. The Briggs & Little, which is my uh, favorite for the Aran kind of yarn, even though this is a really woolly yarn, it's um, very scratchy. But doing this will not help you determine if it's a good yarn for socks i believe it's a great yarn for socks i mean i've worn this here um four or five times already in my boots you cannot see anywhere and tear i do not wash them 
all the time after every single wear because often I'll wear it out in my boots and when I come home I'll take the socks off depending if my feet are warm or not if they're not warm I leave it on for a little bit but usually by the time I make it to my chair and I pick up my knitting my feet are warm enough that I can just take this off and I'll just put on my slippers um, and I usually fold it this way over top of my socks so they're they're ready for my boots next time because they are a hardier wool and they do get softer the more that you wash them um, they wear quite well this is a way softer yarn to start with even if you have an iron weight yarn with nylon where I think the the fiber squishes a lot more down when you walk on them so they don't give me the same wear and tear but you will figure that out and I mean let's be honest this yarn here is anywhere from $18 to $40 or even more depending on the composition of the yarn where the bricks and little boot yarn um I think it's ten dollars now it used to be nine but it could be anywhere from nine to twelve dollars I think depending on the store and they they really are made for boots and for long wear and um you can I made um, a set of of these for my grandson for his rubber boots so that he has a liner in them but you can make them for skating liners or whatever they're just a really hardy wearing boot and they are rougher but they do soften up quite a bit with wear and tear they don't come in tons of colors however I'm not afraid to dye my own yarn. I wanted to have a purple yarn that I wanted to uh, match with blue for the toe, the heel and the cuff. And they really didn't have a purple yarn in the toughy. So I made my own. This is Kool-Aid. Um, and you can see the, the yarn variegation. When you dye purple, it'll pick up the red first and then once that is all sucked up, it'll pick up the blue. So you get really a pretty variation. So depending on how you put it in the pot, it strikes a little bit different. So it's quite nice. However, I always, I also wanted to have like an orangey copper kind of yarn mixed with a blue heel and toe. Um, there is no orange, so I made my own. This is red, yellow and orange maybe. And it also has quite beautiful tonal variegations. I only made one or two of them. Um, it's on the beige yarn way, and you can see how beautiful it took up the color. Um, so there is that. You can play with it a little bit, and it's a lot of fun. And it'll make individual um, yarns as that. When the sock is finished, you can pull them on these yarn blockers after you, um, that's another thing I wanna say, when you knit your sock, and we all have uneven stitches often, or little imperfections in the sock. Um, when you're done with knitting your sock, you should let them soak in a water bath. And for at least a half an hour, I use a salad spinner for the socks, perfect size. And then once I'm done with that, I, well, in the water, I add a little tiny bit of dish soap and I use a little bit of lavender oil. It's not expensive. This is a rather big bottle. It's 30 milligrams. It was $12 and two cents. You can get it cheaper or more expensive, but it's about there. Anyways, between eight and $15, I think. I've had that bottle for a very long time. You can see I only used maybe up to here because I only use a few drops. Moths don't like it and they smell nice. That's that about that. You can do that to any sweater or whatever else you want to block. So I believe, let me think, did I talk about yarn? Um, for the bigger socks yarn, there is another thing that you can get. This here is a Mary Maxim um, Woodlands. I think maybe this is $13 a ball. It has 90% acrylic and 10% um, alpaca. Hmm. 
90% acrylic and 10% alpaca. It is made in Turkey. It's quite a nice, uh, softer yarn. I made a pair of socks with it and I'm actually quite pleased with how they turn out, how they turned out. And you can see, I don't make my shaft super long. It's usually by the end of where the foot is when I fold them over or just a little bit longer. And actually this feels really nice on the foot. It's not sweaty or anything. So that could also be a good alternative. Um, if you want to strengthen the, the yarn, I, uh, like I said before, you can always run a thread of mohair to go with it or um, silk that also strengthens that. You can get different yarns. Um, for example, this regia yarn is a four ply, but it is a little bit thicker because it has yak fiber spun in it. And um, yak is probably one of the warmest um, fibers out there. Um, so I'll see how that wears on my feet or, or if that warms my feet, it is quite soft. Um, I have to say, so even though I, I live in Canada here, um, I came 30 some odd years ago and in my hometown, just outside of my hometown, there is the Shahanmaya Regia, it's called Metz, M-E-Z, um, factory in Kensington, um, in Germany and... I was lucky enough that when my sisters went to Germany, they brought me all kinds back um, because I couldn't go. I guess that was my um, consolation prize, which is 100% appreciated. So let's move on to the next thing. We talked about the yarn. Let's talk about sock needles. If you're just learning how to knit socks and the number one it's a it's a small circumference but number two if you use the regular size yarn and I I believe I already said like I started off with knitting them at 2.75 millimeters I found that fabric was like too loose so I went to 2.5 that was still too loose and now I'm at 2.25 and it gives me the fabric that I like on the socks um so the the needles are quite tiny um I would recommend start off with bamboo needles and bamboo grip your grip your um yarn a little bit better so this is bamboo and merino and it's not super slidey on here but if you have a grip of your yarn even this yarn here it kind of sticks to it a little bit if you are used to working with um, DPNs, my next recommendation is the wooden needles, whether they are likey, like this, or um, these are all 2.25s, because of course I need to have lots because I never just have one, um, one project on the go. I always have many on the go. These are the carbons, um, whether they are Knit Pro, what they call Knit Pro is in Europe and Knitter Sprite here in the US and Canada. These are actually made in India where uh, Knit Picks, I believe, is made in China. Um, or, of course, you can use the metal needles. The wooden are between the bamboo and the metal, and, of course, the metal are really slick. So you kind of have to watch that your needles don't, that your, your yarn doesn't slide off. You can either use the DPNs or you can use, and DPNs is double pointed needles for short, or you can use the Chai Gu or any interchangeable set or a um, 
let's have a look here. I have an Addy set that is not interchangeable. It has a fixed needle. You can get the Chowgu with the fixed needle as well. I don't, um, I don't like a cord shorter than 32, whether I knit one sock or two. I want to have at least 32 um, inch cord, but that is a personal preference. Um, I do like the interchangeables because normally on my left needle, I put a way smaller needle in there. So that could be a 1.75 while I'm my knitter needle here is a 2.25. And one of the things that it does, it, it actually makes my knitting where I can flip from magic loop, like flip the needle out. It makes that a lot faster because this needle here is thinner and it is easier on my hands and I always get perfect tension that way now obviously if I'm knitting with um, double pointed needles you can't have you could but it would be extra work to have them in the um, to have a smaller needle in your left would be a bit harder um, so I have the Chowgu sock set but there are many sock sets that you can get that are less expensive than the Xiaogu. I believe the cords and the needles are, when they first came out, I, I thought that Xiaogu really had the market on that, but I think now everybody about just caught up and they're kind of the same. So um, I also like the, um, I do like metal needles, but I, I use whatever I have and I have like two Likey sets, I have some Addy sets, I have three or four Chaigu sets. Um, I use whatever needle is handy. Um, I do like, I do like working on double pointed needles. Um, the reason for that is that you don't need to shove the needle back all the time as you do in Magic Loop. But when I started knitting, there was no such thing as magic loop. So if you really did have the smaller circumferences, unless you were fighting with the needle all the time, um, you just ended up using double pointed needles. So I don't have ladders. I don't have any issues with the double pointed needles. I'm good to go on that. However, it is a little bit of a skill. So if you know how to do the magic loop and there are many many videos on that go ahead and have a look at those videos what i did want to show here with the needles um i believe this is the mindful set from knitter's pride i believe the cord is mindful set this one needle here is a mindful set and that my needle that i knit with my four millimeter needle is actually a likey from my set or liquor whatever you want to call them and if you do the magic loop once you transition and you pull this cord here to get your holding needle up and you pull the knitting cord into formation if the needle that that is actually your needle holder in the left hand if that is a smaller needle as i work around it um this slides a lot faster. It's like boom, boom, boom. And I can set up and, and go all the time. Um, then of course, when I get to the, not the toe, but when I get to the heel, I have to screw in the proper size needle because you're knitting back and forth. But that's more about the knitting itself. So this is what I like. Um, and have a look at what it is that you do. Oh, I'll leave these out because I want to show you something. So the next thing that we want to talk about, we covered the needles and we covered the yarn. Let's talk about your pattern. Before you print the pattern or um, I usually have the pattern on my tablet. I use Knit Companion almost exclusively now. It is. It has a free component and it has a paid component. 
what is the paid component? I don't know, maybe $30 a year. That's fine. I'm a frugal knitter. So the things that I, I deem like my tools and um, I consider Knit Companion is one of my tools. I'm fine with that. But there is a free version if you want to have a look at it. If not, um, let's talk about Ravelry where you buy your pattern here first for a minute. Um, I already pulled up Ravelry on my tablet here. So let's have a look at Ravelry. In the top over here, you can see that I have mail, one mail, I have messages, and I have my shopping cart. I always leave things in my shopping cart and then I think about it for a little bit. So let's click on my notebook, which is up here. And in my notebook, I have projects, library, and whatever. Let's click on the library, which is on the bottom. Come on up. And I'm going to use my sock set, my, my sock pattern. Let me bring it up for one minute um, so that I can show you. As it is my pattern, um, even if it does show something. Okay, so here is my pattern. Let's click on that. Um, I can open it. Let's go this way here. It opens up in Adobe. This is the pattern. It gives you 13 sizes, etc. Now, you don't need to print all of this because a lot of times there is video it's attached and I talk about different things about the socks, tips that make it easy to help you knitting and whatever you pick, whether you wanna go toe up or cuff down. And then, I mean, yes, read everything through, however, at the end of at the end of my pattern, there are these um, tables. One is for women's socks, one is for kids, one is for men's, and it kind of like um, it's broken into two things. It is either cuff down or toe up. You fold your paper in half, and it tells you how many. If you do a small, medium, or a large, how many stitches do you need to start off with, and when do you decrease? end 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 so you really only need to print that one page or write it on a cue card specific to your size or whatever it is so that is my recommendation open the pattern and have a look so now that you bought it let's open up the page here and this is the same with any um any pattern All right, so it's loading it up and here it is. This is what it looks like. When you look at the top tab here, it'll tell you details about what the sock is and what you get. Then it says yarn ideas. You can click on that. You can see what people that have knitted the pattern, what did they use? And then the next one says projects. There are 27 projects, so 20, 27 times it's been knitted and people actually uploaded the pictures and here you can see the comments of what people say sometimes they say oh i didn't understand the sock pattern at all sometimes they say oh it's the first time i knitted x and i really liked it or the pattern is well written and 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 if you click on it let's say um if they filled out everything let's click on this here I can, yeah. I can click on it. I clicked on the yarn. It talks about the Briggs and Little, etc. But I um, wanted to click on Megan's boot socks. So this is um, 
one of the pictures that I clicked on. I clicked on her name. And if you want to see what does she say about this pattern or what did she use, all of her information is set out here. You can see what, what needle size she used, what she thought about the pattern, and whatever. It's all here. Now, another handy dandy thing I want to show you. I need to go back. So here is the pattern. You bought the pattern. If you can see up in here, I'll, I'll enlarge that a little bit. You can see that there is knitting needles up in here. If I click on this, did I click on it? Is it doing it? Yes, I'm just a little bit impatient. It says, okay, so this is the pattern. It's called Easy Peasy Canadian Winter Socks. If I click on create this pattern. So here is a brand new page already partially filled out for me. And I can go ahead and save this. And then I can say I'm using needles number, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just filling in the yarn. But the pattern information is already here. For my purposes, I often add in the top. I'll put in the year and the month because I knit a lot. Then I can see what did I knit this month, like 2024 in March, and it'll all come up. Um, if you want to add photos, you can do it up here. So what I usually do is, let's say I have my sock here and I take a picture with my telephone. And now I want to upload it into Ravelry because it's just easier on the phone. So I take the picture on my phone. I open up Ravelry on my phone and I click on this tab up here where it says, where does it say it? Add photos or just click on here. So then it says, well, where do you want to have the picture from? Pretend this is my tablet. I didn't take the picture with the tablet. Pretend this is my phone. So if I say I want to take it from here, choose the file, and then it goes through, it opens up in my, it opens up my pictures on my phone. Then it, yeah, it says where I say my files. I don't even know what I have on here because I usually either download things on here, but I tend to not take anything with my tablet it's just too cumbersome so I'm doing it a bit backwards from me so it'll open up the files I can pick up any any picture it'll take a second to do that and then I can say yes upload this or I'll tag a whole few of them so here it'll ask me it doesn't ask me all of this on the phone, but I'll say gallery. I think that's the gallery. It'll be, it'll show me the pictures. Did I say gallery? Yeah. It'll show me the pictures and then I can say, oh, here are the pictures and I can long click, I think. And then I can say done. Okay, let's do that. Done. And here I'll say upload and it'll bring it right up in here then okay so here you can see the three pictures now obviously there are not socks I don't really know what gobbledygook that I picked but there is three pictures once this is done uploading they'll show us pictures and I can actually arrange them I can say oh no I want this one here as first I can push it and I can switch the whatever and oh I didn't do it right but whatever and then when I'm finished I can click on here it'll say done and your pictures are uploaded then usually I go back to the tablet and I can say oh I use this needle and that needle and whatever so that's how I keep track of it normally right as soon as I have my pattern I have the pattern um, pulled up on my tablet I put my sock yarn my needles right beside it and I'll take a picture because you can have some fancy dandy things to keep track of all kinds of your works I believe my sister bought me this I've not used it once I think I've had it now for a few years I'm just the worst of keeping track of this stuff and I I don't know why I do this and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone I think I remember that's 
just not gonna happen. So I, I take pictures. The same when my sock is finished, I weigh it and I take a picture right off the socks on the weigh scale. And I upload it into that particular pattern in my projects. So that's how I deal with that. Now, I can put that away. If the next point, there are a couple of tools that I use religiously all the time. I suffer from rheumatoid arthritis and it does cause brain fog in the medication that I take for that increases brain fog. So it just creeps up on me on the darndest times. I'll either talk to somebody and I, forget, I I can't grab the word that I want to use. And the more I think about it, the further it gets away. Or I just, um, I don't know, I do stuff and only half my brain is connected to what it is that I'm doing. Like I take a picture of something and then for whatever reason, like a few hours later, I think, oh, I was going to take a picture of that. Did I do it or not? Like, I don't remember. I want to say we're always 100% present, but I don't believe that that is true. So regardless, there are a few things that I do the same all the time because if I switch things up, I can get so confused and turned around. It's not even funny. So for example, it doesn't matter how I cast on my cast on will be on the right all the time even if i have to knit half a row to get over there to make it so my cast on will always be on the right because this is i am right-handed and this is how i transition my needles so my cast on will always have to be on the right so i hang my tail out so that I can see where my cast on is. My tails are always hanging out, so it is a visual cue to me. This is end of the round for me. When I knit on the toes, or yeah, on the toes, it's kind of easy. Let's say I make a toe up, because every second row you actually increase to make this wedge toe that's fine but then when I switch to my main color and that's very easy you just let go of that yarn you let it hang out you take a new yarn and you just start knitting with it that's how easy it is to change color so when you do that um I was gonna say did I bring the white yarn of course I did because I have it in my pouch so my if i'm knitting socks everything that i knit with will be in the same bag whether it is a pouch like this or thought i brought it down um maybe not i make um sock pouches that i um that I kind of make kits with, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, anyways, so I have everything in the pouch. These yarns, this is the Mary Maxim Woodland that is 90 acrylic and 10% alpaca. They're kind of fine. I can take out of the middle and whatever. If I have a yarn cake, and again, they are more expensive. And if you take it out of the middle, the, the cake kind of collapses really funny. If you take it from the outside, sometimes it takes off. I do have quite a few yarn bowls that are ceramic that I buy from the Potter's Guild. And often they just have the most gorgeous yarn bowls or you go to the shows and they are beautiful. I have a few of them. I just don't seem to be able to help myself. However, often it'll just hold my notions. It doesn't have tons of stuff in it because I find that they are not portable and the 
I don't like the way that these cakes here kind of collapse. So what I came up with is I make these yarn caddies under the modern needle i have a store on facebook and i not always upload it so if you're interested in something just let me know anyways um these store flat they have a lining they can be washed if you accidentally spill something on it um and you just control them with the beads to kind of sip the elastic up as the cake gets smaller but I find that a lot of um, knitters also have pets and for me I take my stuff everywhere I don't want to get my yarn tangled up dirty or whatever it is or have cat hair in it when I go to my sister she has uh, three cats and often my niece's dog as she gets deployed or is on some course or mission or whatnot um, they have the dog I love going over there. I love sitting with the cats. I love sitting with the dog. The hair, not so much. So I put my yarn cakes into these um, yarn caddies. You can see the bottom folds out. Um, very clean. I can have that going and I throw it in my knitting bag and the cake is clean. It's protected and nothing happens to them. I, this is how fa how flat they store. I can have 50 of those in a drawer and not a problem. Now, other things that you can use. We went, um, the biggest craze seemed to be these bin stores. Where you pay like, I don't know what they have. Like Wednesday is dollar day, Thursday is two dollar day, Tuesday is three dollar day and whatever it is. But anyways, they had this huge roll of, I don't know. I think it's a hospital thing that they put under your, um, if you get a cast or something either on your arm or on your leg. Or if you, if you have um, a big bandage somewhere to keep it clean. They give you this elastic kind of hose. Well, I can put that around my yarn. And I think I bought like a big thingy like this and I thought, oh my God. Anyways, um, and it can keep my ends together and I can pull from the outside or the inside, uh, the same as on the yarn caddies and it keeps everything clean. And again, transportable. And I hate these yarn ends that just go everywhere. If you don't have any of that, a little zip lock that has the zip on the top, Put it in there and you can get these little hair clips. Flip them in the ends like this and close it and your ends are secure. You can buy even smaller ones, the baby ones. I think that they're not good for anything anyways. And you get like 30 on one of those cards for $1.50. Use them to clean up your yarn ends and they'll never go anywhere. So, or you can use um, a pantyhose, like um, the knee highs are fine. You can just stick it in a knee high, roll it back. It keeps, it keeps your yarn clean and protected until you have the finished product. Um, it's dust free, it's hair free, whatever it is. So that keeps care of your yarn you can buy these things here um i don't know if i bought that at the yarn store or if i bought it from timu or wherever i bought it but it depills um the socks quite nicely you just comb it over your sock and if there's pills on it or anything else these little fine hairs will grab it and you have a clean sock. And I think they're under $3, maybe under $5. I don't remember now. Um, some of these things I've had around for a very long time. But what I always have around when I'm knitting is um, these little gadgets or rings. They're just tiny 
tiny elasticized out rings. These are even thinner. Um, I have white ones that I bought at Michael's and I just put, the, I recycle a lot of stuff, but I like this one because they all fit in here. Um, retainer elastics work. And the reason why I like these is, so let's say it's the first time, um, well, okay. Let's say my, okay, I have four. I have my needle set and I'm knitting with these needles here. But now, right now, the sock is hanging off of here. I can just do this, do another one on the on the end, and they act like little brake pads. Pads. Nothing actually happens to my stitches. Or on here, I can pull it up to the front, and this is my brake pad. And they really do stay on. Like I really have to pull it off. So if I put this in my bag, nothing will happen to it. You can have needle protectors like this that snap open. You just stick your one side in it and the cord, push it over, snap it together and nothing will happen and neither will it puncture your, your bag. You can get um, a cardboard tubes that'll do that. Um, I usually, I, I have these, but I usually just put an elastic around it. When I'm done with my um, needles, not, not the interchangeables because I'll put them back in the set, but my DPN set, I'll just put them together like this and then they go back into my cup. I have cups like this with needles and measuring tools and all kinds of stuff and sometimes funky little gadgets that I like, you know, roller or whatever gets in here. I have a little set of needles, but they hurt my hands. So I often use them as stitch holders for stuff. And again, I'll put the little tiny elastics around it. I don't use household elastics because I used to, but what I find is that they break down over time and then they stick to your needle and or the bamboo or the wood and they don't ever clean off properly anymore so i don't like using them so another thing that i have all the time on me is bobby pins and i usually have this here is um toothpick from the dollar store we used up the toothpicks and it's just a perfect little round thingy so i have bobby pins in here i have these thin little elastics and i have these baby hair things and they're usually like when you look at them on amazon or, or on timu or wherever you look at them these happen to be neon but i have like a lot of them um i like these little ones before i found the baby ones and you don't always find them i had the bigger ones that had a little metal bit in it so i just wound them around my finger tied a knot cut the metal thingy off and then you can push a bead on it if you want to or whatever you can decorate them a little bit but for me they're just fine the way that they are so i like these little um elastics and i use them for row counters or anything that i need to mark on here so very often i'll use a traffic light approach red which this would be my red and green green means i can just knit over it i can um it could be if i have a sweater i put the halves like here, one of them is end of round and the other one is the middle of this. I'll put a green one in there because I often like split hems um, so that I don't need a recount. But if I'm counting rows, for example, um, 
this is my end of round or beginning of the round let's say I um, each time I knit a row I'll push this out one so that it counts my rows if I go around it one whole time I'll take a bobby pin and I'll stick it in here which means I went around it one time and then I start the counting again at number one. So if I leave this in the bag for like a half a year or three months or two months or 10 years, when I come back, I know I did, I have 40 stitches on here, I believe. So I did 40 rows because I have this here and then whatever rounds, wherever the marker is. Now I'm ready here to start the heel. That's why it doesn't have a marker in it. Um, but I think I did 47 rows or whatever it is. And that's how I know, because this would be 40 for the whole round and then whatever it lands on. If I have to decrease for an arm, like, or if I know I need to do 13 rows before I do something, so I'll count out 13, I'll park a red, a red marker here, and then I have my counter that I push over every single time I knit a row. And by the time I get to here, I know I did my 13. Because otherwise I'm a little bit compulsive. I'll count it like every single row, even though I know I'm, I can't be possibly close. So I count it once and then I knit to that thing. I double count to make sure I have whatever number I need. And then I can let it go. So when the two markers meet, I know I'm done with my rows and now I can do whatever different stripe or different color or whatever so I always have bobby pins and I and the reason why I like bobby pins is okay, let's talk about that for a second I also have the light bulb stitch markers and I do have a few in my thing in here because sometimes doesn't happen to me very often but sometimes I drop a stitch I'll catch it either with a bobby pin or with a stitch marker with the, with a the light bulb one and then I know I need to fix that because I'll let's say I drop the stitch down here but I don't have a visible hole or anything I'll just keep on knitting and I'll pick up one more stitch up here I'll just increase one to get that stitch count back I'll pull that stitch that I dropped to the back and then just thread a yarn through it and clean up my yarn tails on either side and that's good enough that stitch won't go anywhere or um, if I need to mark something or whatever or let's say I split the yarn and I realized that way down here I only picked up like sometimes when the yarn is plied and your needle is too sharp you'll split that and I'll only have half of this on on my needle and you can see it so obviously it's not structurally the same and it's not as secure so I'll put a bobby pin or um, a light bulb a locking stitch marker in there so that I can see yeah I need to fix that stitch and I'll do the same thing I'll mattress stitch it over top just same as I did this I think I used that for another sample I used green so that you can see that you can't really see it you just take that color and follow the stitch that is only a half stitch, bury your tail ends and nobody is a visor. You can't see that. It's not raised. It's not nothing. Once this is washed one time, it'll disappear. If you want to show it to somebody, this is what you did. You can't even see it. So I don't stress about things like that. But that's why I'll always have like um, the round stitch markers the round stitch markers they're not really stitch marker they're baby elastics I think these are a three quarter inch and I think that they're the perfect size it doesn't matter what I knit with whether I knit with a six or an eight millimeter needle or a tiny needle and they're really thin they don't distort my stitch or nothing so I really like them I bought some bigger ones which they are okay but you can see the size is a little bit bigger I saw these neon ones and I really like them because I can see them right away when I look through stuff like they're so bright you almost need sunglasses which means I'll find them so that's fine I'll always like <clears throat> in front of me I always have this tray here 
which has um, measuring tape, stitch markers, and even if you put a knot on them, you can put a bead on it or whatever you want. But this is stretchy, so you don't necessarily have to put your work down. Um, I have number beads. So if I really want to put, like I work this with a four and a half, I can put 45, put it on a light bulb stitch marker and stitch that on here or stick it on here if I need the needle for whatever else, I'll know what I used. But because now I keep track of it on Ravelry all the time, that is not a thing. Another thing that I use all the time is, because I have Raynaud's, my fingertips sometimes are very, very sensitive. So I use these rubber fingertip thingies from the Dollar Tree or I think they're the Dollar Tree in the paper scrapbooking selection. They're just silicone fingers. And of course, my fingers are a little bit bigger or they swell a lot of the time. I just slit them a little bit so that I can get it on. But depending, because I like sharp needles and I tend to push my needle back like this all the time, I don't want to incur a sore in here because the Raynaud's makes it behave strange and once they get infected I can have a real mess so very often if I have sore fingers this is what I use I put that on there and no issues at all now what else would I say about the sock knitting if you don't keep track on Ravelry you can get like how many tags do you get here 25 of these little de deco tags for 95 cents 99 cents they are also dollar store thingies you can take one of these cards out write your information on there let's say how many stitches you used and what needle you used and often what pattern you used Use a light bulb stitch marker and you can either stick it to your yarn caddy or if you have a mini Ziploc bag or whatever until your sock is big enough that you can actually stick it on. But do put it somewhere in that project because we always think that we remember and the reality is, we actually don't. I have some, um, before I started this, and I was cleaning up my scrap, my my yarn from God knows how long ago. And I have started things where you think, okay, so I actually don't even know what pattern was this. And if I took the needle out and pulled the cord in it, whether you use a shoestring where you have like the wax or the plastic around it to put the needles on hold, or you have these handy dandy cords, I have no idea what that project actually was. And that is a sad thing because you spend time on it. Now, some of it I probably wouldn't fit me now or I wouldn't. Um, I turned into such a better knitter that I actually don't like that anymore. Or I think, oh, whatever. If you think that you're going to reclaim the yarn, then go ahead, do that. But do keep track of it somewhere. You don't need to make all of the mistakes that I made myself. And you can have like these little um, stitch markers or wherever. You can get the cutest little things to make emergency um, thingies or just to have stuff in your bag that holds your stuff. I often have um, stuff like this. I buy them in these little tins because when they're empty and they're washed out, you can have like Easter egg thingies in here with chocolates or Christmas things with chocolates, then just reuse those tins. And then you can put your scissors in and your needles and whatever. And they close actually really firm so that you have all of your things together. So I believe that kind of covers what you need or what you should think about before you start your sock knitting journey and how to keep everything neat and organized and together so i'll say happy knitting for right now and i'll see you next time have a wonderful day